This is BBC News. Welcome if you're watching here in the UK or around the world. I'm Martine Croxall. Our top stories. Aid agencies call for better access to the earthquake disaster zones from Turkey to Syria as the number of people killed in both countries rises to more than 24,000. Over on that side of the border, there's a constant sound of sirens, of heavy machinery, of people working. But there's none of that here. Down there, there are small children removing the rubble. The United Nations estimates the earthquakes may have left nearly five and a half million people homeless in Syria. The government there says it will allow aid to be delivered to rebel-held parts of the country. Despite the odds, people are still being pulled out alive from under the rubble in Turkey, more than 120 hours after the first earthquake struck. Surviving the earthquake, that's the first hurdle. You know, what will their lives be like? What will their lives be like in the coming months and years as a result of the destruction we see here today? In other news, US fighter jets shoot down an unidentified aircraft over Alaska after President Biden gave the order to seek and destroy. Troops are trying to salvage the wreckage. Celebrating UK music, indie band Wet Leg and singer Harry Styles lead the way with four nominations each for tonight's Brit Awards. Hello and welcome. Rescuers in Turkey and Syria are increasingly focusing efforts on the survivors of Monday's earthquakes who are enduring the aftermath in the cold of winter. The United Nations says about 900,000 people urgently need hot meals on both sides of the border and more than a million are homeless. These are live pictures from southern Turkey. The number of deaths has now passed 24,000, but small numbers of victims continue to be pulled alive from the rubble as thousands of rescue workers continue their search for survivors. Speaking on a visit to the Turkish city of Karamanmarash, the United Nations humanitarian chief, Martin Griffiths, said the earthquakes were the worst event in 100 years in this region. He praised Turkey's response to the disaster as extraordinary and expressed hope that aid to Syria would reach both government and opposition-held areas, but he was warned that, that it is not yet clear how this is going to happen. The World Health Organization has appealed to international donors to help them scale up their response to the earthquakes. Officials appealed for more than $40 million and said that Syria in particular had been grossly neglected for many years and the resilience of its healthcare system was now exhausted. In the last hour, the uh, WHO chief, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, has arrived in the Syrian city of Aleppo to see the devastation for himself. Our correspondent Quentin Somerville is in Harem in northwest Idlib province in Syria, where rebels are in control. He found little sign of a relief effort with local people, including children, left scouring through rubble for possible survivors. <laughs> 